This video is for section 7.3, which is called rational exponents. Now, keep in mind that rational simply means fraction. All right? So what they have here first is a little summary. What if they ask me to write the square root of something? Well, we're used to writing it in that form. It can also be written as a power of one-half on that base. Cube root would be the third root of something or the one-third power. And then we can generalize it as the nth root, which is the whatever root, any root that you want, can be written as 1 over that root. All right? So the first example they have here is, can you simply change this to radical form? So one of the things that you have to be able to develop is the ability to change between radical form and rational exponent form. Now, I have this entire base right here, 6xy, being raised to the one-half power. Another way to write that is to just say it's the square root of 6xy. That's all that they want you to do here. Can you put it in radical form? Radical means with the root symbol. But now the directions change a little bit, for example, number two, and they say, can you simplify this? In order to simplify something that involves a fractional exponent, what you want to be able to do is to look at the base number again. So remember again, we're looking at the base, 625. And ask yourself, is there another way to write 625 with a power? So if I pull up my handy dandy calculator here, I know, for example, 5 raised to the, so in this calculator, it's x to the y, 5 raised to the second power is 25. Well, that's, I need to get 625. So how about 5 raised to the third power? That's 125. How about 5 raised to the fourth power? Ah, that's 625. So 5 to the fourth is another way that I can write 625. I know that 5 to the fourth is the same thing as 625. And now I have that raised to the one fourth power. Take a look. What happens here? Our power to power property now kicks in. This is 5 to the 4th times 1 fourth. Power to power, you multiply the powers. So that would leave me with 5 to the 1st, or just simply 5. Okay? Now, we also have these things that are called exponential equations. To solve an expo exponential equation, you have to get both sides of the equation to contain the same base. Once the bases are the same, so again, this is a base, 1, 0, 2, 4, and 4. Once those bases are the same value, then I can solve the equation that exists up in the exponents. So I'm going to kind of play around here first. All right, and take this. I always start with the smaller number. Let's start with 4. I think it's going to be raised to, let's say, the fourth power. 4 to the 4th power is 256. That's not enough. I'm trying to get 4 to be raised to a power, so I get 1024. How about 4 to the 5th? There we go. 4 to the 5th power is another way to write 1024. So I'm going to rewrite this as 4 to the 5th, and I already have that x minus 1, so remember that's going to be the power to power rule. I'm going to multiply those powers. And that's equal to 4, but it has to have an exponent. Well, remember, any number can be written with an exponent of 1. Because I have the same bases right now, I can drop them and focus on solving the equation that exists in the exponents. 5 times x minus 1 is equal to 1. This is how I solve an exponential equation. I'm going to distribute. 5x minus 5 equals 1. Add 5 to both sides. 5x is equal to 6. Divide both sides by 5. I get x is equal to 6 over 5. All right. Exponential equations are a little tricky, so make sure you spend some time trying to learn how to do them. Good luck.